For most of my life, I've been a chef, a DJ, and a grower. Nothing makes me happier than good cuisine, great music, and excellent flour. Join me on an adventure as we dig into cannabis culture. My name is Cameron, and this is Deep Roots. Hey guys, Cameron from Canada Cribs. Just touched down in the Mile High City. Hanging out here at Union Station. We're gonna go out and explore this awesome town. Let's go. I mean, in what house doesn't that break? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. You know, what really brought me into this was uh, a necessity, so I'll kind of go back. My kid was diagnosed with leukemia when he was three years old. So, you know, I was in construction. The bubble happened in 08, you know, and then we really said, okay, what are we going to do now? and cannabis was right there at the doorstep, you know. So we got into it then. Uh, by this point, my son is, is uh, in remission. He's out of his cancer treatment. But through that, I saw a lot of, of parents and things that needed help with, with information on things. You know, relatives I have in other parts of the country asking about, you know, I got a friend whose kid has this or that and whatnot. And there's not really a lot of research on it. But it ties together. You got a lot of families that have moved their children out here to, you know, to be able to use it legally and not be arrested for it. So, you know, it was obviously all medical out here at one point. So it really played into the medical side of things. We're helping a lot of people out. Yeah, I just came out and kind of fell into this. You know, I didn't expect to be here 20 years ago to say that I'll be where I am and doing what I'm doing right. at the time. Right, I mean, who'd have thunk it, you know? Yeah. Uh, especially when you think about 20 years ago, you know, that's sort of the time frame I'm looking at too. I was in early in 96 when California went medical. Right. All of my friends who were also early movers in the medical marijuana thing, they were all way into the music scene. Do you have a, any, like, affinity for music? Do you have music in your background at all? Or? No, I mean, other than, like, you know, when I was a kid, like, going to festivals and things like that, now it's pretty much just to go and sure. catch a good buzz. Dane and Sam will be able to lend some culture things to us, like I was saying. And I'm not super up to date on like what's cool and what the hell ain't right. How, I'm, how I'm old, old are you? 43. Oh, dude, I, I'm even older than you. Yeah, cool. 43, yeah. buddy. How old are you? I'm 44. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Same boat. All right. Well, I, I, this might be a win for you. You're probably not always in a room with someone older than you. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm not typically. You know. A couple of my partners are older than me. I, don't know, I sort of feel like an adult and I've grown up and I'm now in the industry and it's like I, I'm, I've got a slightly different perspective on it. All right, yeah, we're not so underground anymore, right? So now you can you, you can be proud of what you do, you know, like my son who's, who's 12 years old, right? He completely understands the business we're in, what we do, everything about it, and he's proud of, of the fact of that. And, and, you know, and he sees this, you know, a marijuana story on the news. He's like, yeah, Dad, does that affect you? You know, he... He sees it as a real business, and this is not like we're a bunch of bandits now running around illegally. A lot of it just came from that we started out as wholesalers, and then dispensaries needed good partners that could produce consistent quality to them and, and on a timely basis. Initially, you didn't have to be vertically integrated in Colorado, right? So you could just have a dispensary and no grow under medical. The state mandated vertical integration, so you had these shotgun weddings to where it's like, all right, you're the best partner. You know, you, and you really may not even know each other that well, but it was just like shotgun weddings, like I said, to just get in, link up with somebody and be able to run your license and keep going. Really nobody had a warehouse at, at that point in time. You know, we were running like a, a I think it was 12,000 feet back then, which was pretty good size compared to somebody's 600 foot basement. So we were pumping out much bigger weights than, than a lot of the people we were in competition with. And that's really what got us in was from the beginning was being, you know, one of the first guys coming in that could actually produce consistently. You know? Well positioned early on. Yeah, now here we are. We made it buy a couple more dispensaries. We've sold a couple. It just comes and goes, you know. Very dynamic in Colorado. 
And you're not just in Colorado, right? You're 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 scattered. Yeah, we have uh, an outfit in Las Vegas, and then uh, one in Portland, Oregon, too. I just got here to Green Man Cannabis, hanging out with Corey, one of the founders. Uh, we're up here in the wheelhouse. We're looking at 60,000 square feet. This is only half of Green Man Cannabis. So Corey, can you tell me a little bit about what your process is uh, on the propagation side? There's a little bit of seed in the building, but most of it comes from mother stock. What we'll do is pull a clone off of there. Uh, we use Clonex rooting gel, which is a trusted product for us. We'll dip it in into there, and then we'll set into rock wool. And we'll run those rock wool trays for about two weeks until we see roots, at which point we go to transplant into our next phase for vegetative phase. The manufacturer Clonex HDI, apparently they make a, uh, a rooting media, which is similar to what you're currently using. Have you, are you familiar with uh, this Root Riot product? I am familiar with it. Um, we're always looking for new uh, processes to use and how we're working with things. And uh, I actually look forward to trying their product to test against my current media that I'm using for propagation. Yeah, another key product for us is uh, House and Gardens Roots Accelerator. What we see with that is much less damp off rate, healthier roots coming out, more numerous. It's a heavily trusted product for us that we've used for years now. The beneficial microbial life that it adds to the mix is like it's a win that it's I can- It's a proven I, I, Yeah, totally, proven recipe. Let's talk a little bit about your veg cycle. Maybe tell me about the media that you use and uh, some of the products that you use to uh, achieve your award-winning finished product. Certainly, uh, happy roots, happy fruits, right? And that's where it all begins is in that very beginning when we're trying to take them from a rock wool product into a soilless product, there's a transition there, and that Synthesizm helps with that transition. Helps with that transition. Right. That's great. It really gets the uh, the young roots going fast, so that we can have a really productive flowering phase. What's uh, some of your secret sauce on the flower side? We use a hybrid system uh, that we've developed over the last ten years. Really, Big Bud is a really good bloom booster for us. Uh, we see the largest growth with Big Bud as opposed to five to six other systems that we've tested. So it just leads to really terpene rich, heavy flower that comes off of it. Then moving past that into your last two weeks of feed, you move on to the overdrive product, which is your finisher, which is gonna really give you your bulking and get them really nice and fat at the end and finish up. You know, and so it's part of this hybrid recipe that we built to where we feel like we're hitting the plants at all the angles that they need to uh, really get the genetic expression from, yeah. from each strain. Full, full phenotype. Flavor and, and terpene expression for us. So Levi from Advanced Nutrients is here with us today, so let's invite him up. Perfect. I'm here with Levi from Advanced Nutrients. Levi, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Cameron. Happy to be here. So, Levi, can you give me a little bit of background on uh, on Advanced Nutrients? Sure. Yeah. You know, we're owned by Big Mike Stromitis, who personally started growing in the late '80s. And when he started growing, there wasn't internet, there wasn't books talking about how to grow. So he definitely had a lot of failures, and he speaks openly about that. But he quickly learned that the products out there just weren't cutting it. So he hired a team of scientists and started developing nutrients specifically for the cannabis plant. So we started off, you know, in Big Mike's garage and now we have clients in over 100 countries that use our products. So it's been a, a wild ride to say the least, but uh, our story is definitely worth looking into. It's very interesting. What we're seeing now is that uh, really there are so many medical benefits to it and I feel like uh, that's something that's been important to me. It's probably something that was important to you. Is that how you became involved in this industry? Like, does the plant answer some sort of, uh, I don't know, higher calling? To answer your question, you know, I've always been passionate about cannabis. And like you said, originally it was just kind of a, you know, experimental thing for me, but I really learned to appreciate the medical benefits and the way that it helps people and the science behind it. Uh, you know, the, the fact that our body has receptors for cannabinoids totally. just shows you that we adapted and that evolved around this plant throughout time. So uh, it definitely is 
meant to be a part of our life, I feel. So understanding wow. the full cannabinoid spectrum and being able to isolate each individual molecule, and then you can actually regulate it as a medicine, you know, instead of someone coming in with glaucoma and saying, here's a prescription, go smoke weed. Totally. It's actually, you know, THCV is very effective for uh, glaucoma, and we found a way to isolate that molecule. Right. Now we can put it into a pill form. So now it's five milligrams right. dosage. It's very exact, very regulated, and I think that's where the future is going to go. I absolutely agree with you, man. You know, I uh, know advanced from the uh, retail side, you know, super familiar with it. I have a, a long background with the plant too. And it was really cool to see this large scale facility here using your product. Can you tell me a little bit about how you guys are changing the focus from just the sort of the small time to, sure. to, to the commercial scale? Yeah, you know, I mean, originally we were definitely specialized in the smaller connoisseur grows, you know, 50 lights and under. But as the industry's changed, we've had to adapt, you know, uh, to keep ourselves modern. And with the influx of auto dosing machines and whatnot, we uh, came out with this powdered line that's going to be made specifically for commercial growing. Do you have any uh, interest in like an all organic line? We do have an all organic line actually. Uh, our base is iguana juice. Uh, it's a one part grow, one part bloom, and then we have a full assortment of additives, specifically OIM approved CDFA. Um, it meets all organic requirements and it has amazing results. You know, we've heard great things from world class growers, so we're very excited. No, it's great. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are really doing it. You really got your hands in a lot of pies. We try to cover all bases for sure. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah where are you guys I mean, playing at? We're playing at Larimer Lounge, like rap metal. Rap metal. Yeah, it's kind of like new metal, bringing back like old stuff, like Limp Bizkit, okay. kind of stuff like that. Okay, sure. So that's sure, what sure. we're that's what we're doing. How did Denver change after it was legalized? Um, well, I'm a native, so obviously like more people came here. Um, so that was kind of annoying, like all the traffic and stuff. But the dispensaries have been really cool. I don't know, it's it's a communal thing. I guess that's the coolest thing bringing about people it together. for me. Yeah, yeah, 100. percent Word up. So with this much square footage and these many plants, you have to have a, an IPM protocol that's going to be consistent and thorough and not going to allow for uh, any of the, the troubles that could plague this kind of uh, operation. So can you speak to your uh, integrated pest management? Two of the key ingredients that we use, one would be Smite, which is in our weekly IPM, um, which is really directed towards the insect side of things, uh, your spider mites, thrips, aphids, that's gonna help to keep them at bay. It's a good system to where you're hitting them on reproductive phases, anti-feedants, you know, what have you, for how it works on mode of action. So Smite is one of the key players in that for our insecticidal IPM. Then on our fungicidal IPM, uh, we use Banish, which is from the same company. And as long as you're using that and you have the, the coating on the leaves, you're not gonna see PM be able to proliferate as much as without it. And again, it's a, it's a part of a five to six uh, headed approach for how to combat these problems in here, but it is a key part of the regimen for what we're doing. What do you use to automate your systems in order to uh, buy back some of your life and some of the lives of uh, your employees. Right now we're on a uh, controller that was built by Total Grow Control. It's called the Eden System. It's a smart computer that basically learns trends and alerts you to uh, any anomalies that it may see within the system. So we've just installed this over the last four to five months. It's working great and now it's to give it more responsibility as we move along. But yeah, it's a major time saver. You know, instead of paying someone to stand and, and babysit a pump that's watering a table, the computer is babysitting. So I have that, that body doing something else that a computer can't do. Totally. All right, so it's the balance of technology and human hands, you know, all at once. You know, we've been using PL lights uh, for some time now. Uh, this building in particular has 3,000 PL fixtures in it. Well, I noticed when we were walking around down here, you are getting, uh, you know, dense 
uh, flowers, you know, well below the, the, the canopy, which right. really speaks to the, uh, the the penetration that those reflectors are giving. Right, you. the drive that we're yeah. getting on them, right? Yeah. Because LARF doesn't sell well. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants the LARF. Yeah. What's really nice about these uh, reflectors is that on our scissor lift, it just pops right up. There's no fasteners holding it. It pops up, you clean it off, put it back on. It's about a one minute process per fixture. And outside of that, they're pretty much maintenance free. Plug just, and play. Just do their thing. Yeah, that's great. With this much light, you have to control the environment somehow. There's gonna be a ton of water out there. You need to avoid bud rot and so on and so forth. What, what's the dehumidification system that you're using in here? 24 Quest 506s running in the whole building. 506 stands for 506 pints a day. So as soon as the lights turn off, you'll see a spike from maybe call it 40 to 45. It can try to climb over 60. That's when these things time to shine is really, it is in, in darkness hours. So they'll run all night long continuously till the lights come back on, then they'll kind of trickle off because the AC picks back up. They work really well. This is their upsized unit. And without these, you would have a nightmare in here. You would have botrytis, you'd have powdery mildew. Uh, the walls would be sweating. The walls would be sweating. <laughs> you know, you might start seeing mold on the walls and whatnot. So those are really a key part to the environmental package that we run in here. It's just as important as the AC, essentially. Once a given section is harvested, um, it needs to be clean, sanitized, all the irrigation lines have to be pulled, and we run a product called Drip Clean through it. So really what it does is it breaks down all that excess salt uh, that's in there. And then if we were on hydro, we would use it more often as far as to desalt things, if you will, you know, as we were running, since we're in a soilless mix, we don't run it into soil, we simply use it as a sanitizing agent. That's what we Very came special. here to film. This yeah. is the so only one. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish I wish we had this all all on the stage. Yeah. This is totally normal. I'm with Sam and Dane, and we are here in Denver at the coffee joint. This is one of the first open consumption locations in the United States. Uh, and so we are here in the open drinking our coffee and enjoying the, uh, the fruits of their labor. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Dane. I'm the product manager for Green Man. Um, I'm also the wholesale director. And I'm Sam. I'm the marketing director for Green Man. Um, so I do everything from the website to the social media to the events to coordinating stuff like this. So I think it's kind, Apparel. Of, like, kind of like a dream job. You have the best job in the world. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I think it's super, super yeah. fun. We're out here in this, you know, actual business. We're not in someone's <coughs> basement, you know, we're not hiding. And So you guys, we were, um, I don't know, tell me something fun about Denver. What's going on with this sweet town, Mile High? Um, there's lots of fun stuff going on, especially 420 week just happened. So mm. there's just, you know, Denver's always crazy this time of year. It's sure. always buzzing. Mm. Um, Red Rocks always has really awesome lineups. 311. When, when were Red you Man there? Man. I was there 420 for uh, Snoop. Pepper. With Snoop Pepper. 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 Oh, Pepper. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. We went <coughs> Friday night, 419. Mm. And uh, yep, exactly. Yeah. One of the vendors that we carry at the dispensary, um, they were sponsoring it. And so we yeah. had to go backstage cool. and see Method Man and Red Man and 311. And um, there's a, a hidden tunnel, a hidden tunnel down underneath Red Rocks. And it takes you under what? where you go through. <laughs> hidden tunnel? Hidden right? Doomsday? Yeah. Like, what the yeah, fuck is that? Like, it, it takes you down by where the artists stay, their green rooms and stuff. And then you go down and all these artists that have ever played for all the years Red Rocks has been open have been signing this hallway. Awesome. If you go down the hallway, awesome. there's just signatures awesome. from everyone you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the hallway, it pops you out and you're right in the middle underneath the audience and you're at the sound booth. Oh, that's that's definitely so a bucket list. So yeah, bucket list, list for sure. Yeah, and so I've lived here my whole life and we go to so many Red Rock shows all the oh, time. Oh, how special. There, but yeah. so to finally go, we were really, really mm -hmm. excited cool. about that. And I think cannabis and music has gone together since yeah. to the beginning. Yeah. It's always mm -hmm. just been, you know, two types of therapy and they just go hand in hand. Well, and like it's like creative and enjoyment. So yeah. even like for the listener, they can do it mm -hmm. and it, it amplifies their experience and creative wise for the artist. Yeah. Yeah. It makes music better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it makes food it, taste it, better. It, it makes everything better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so where's cool to be in town? Like 
downtown Denver. I know that we have sort of touched on going to the Rhino District tonight, which is... Yeah, Rhino's really cool because yeah. there's a lot of up-and-coming stuff there, a lot of art. There's the Santa Fe Art District. There's tons wow. of galleries. But okay. that's where our other dispensary is, Green Man's down there right at the end. So mm -hmm. they do First Friday. Yeah, all the galleries open up and street vendors, bands. Right. It's like a right. miniature. It's like a farmers market once a right. month it's for artists. First and like that. Fridays, and yeah. it's, it's yeah. like and it's crafts. And yeah, stuff, yeah, all and the food like, and all that. Yep, yep. It's a lot of fun. And it's free, so it's mm -hmm. like fun thing to just Plus, bring. Plus, I can mm -hmm. afford it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's kid friendly. It's kid friendly. There's a bunch of kids there too. And uh, snowboard on the block is a fun time. <laughs> yes, we love that. They do a bunch of snowboard premieres and like project them on like sides of buildings and stuff. That's so they have fun. a bunch of different like Burton's release party, and we went and saw uh, Travis Rice's Art of Flight. So they do have the Performing Arts Center. They have yeah. the big statues of the dancing people you probably saw when you drive by. Did we see this? I'm not sure if we've seen it. <laughs> I remember the scary yeah. horse yeah. at the airport, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they call it Lucifer. It's got red eyes. Well, dude, and do you know it fell, fell on the... The guy who made it. Yes. Yeah, he killed him. <laughs> yes. yeah, there's a Too many coincidences to yeah, be a coincidence. Oh, no. <laughs> so, on 17th Street, it's pretty fun. We used to live kind of by there. Um, oh, Ace, Ace Ping Pong Bar. I think it's like Korean food. And then they're just ping pong. Nick. <laughs> Is the ping pong? There's master. one back there. You feel like Spidey <laughs> senses were going yeah. off. You're like. <laughs> My athletic prowess is coming out now. You better watch it. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Look at that top spin, baby. <laughs> we're only playing to 11 in one game. Six five, six five. Match point. Yes! Let's go, dude! Match point, baby! Match point. Hey, why do you keep saying that? We're playing to 11. Hey, match point, every point. Win by two? No, bro. Nine ten. <laughs> yes! Yes, dude! Good play, bro. Good play. Hey, he didn't kick my ass, though. I'm Cameron from Canna Cribs. I'm Drew from Green Man Cannabis. Great to meet you. It's a pleasure. This one is gonna be our favorite sativa. This is Ghost Train Haze. Three-time Cannabis Cup winner, three years in a row. It's one of its kind. Really good genetics, rare dankness, definitely has it at the top of their game. Uh, Star Killer is, an, again, uh, beautiful hybrid. We're heading into that rare dankness uh, territory again for genetics. Skywalker OG and rare dankness number two. Definitely has this native aspect to it. Definitely a certain cerebral calm to it. I wouldn't do anything very active, like hiking in Colorado on it. It's definitely more of a lethargic strain. Sure. Can we check out some of your concentrates? Absolutely. We can definitely hash it out. <laughs> Don't concentrate on that pun too much. <laughs> yeah. Currently, uh, one of our fan favorites here is our Green Man Gold. Green Man Gold is a sugar wax that we blend all of our strains into one sure. concentrate. Sure. So you kind of never know which high it's going to be right. when you pick it up every week. Right. Surprise. Surprise indeed. <laughs> wow, man, really killer stuff here. Um, I'm wondering, can you tell me a little bit of what you use to uh, to administrate and the software that you use here in the uh, in the dispensary? Absolutely. Um, our retail point of sale system is going to be Flow Hub. It's very data driven, so anyone that likes to just sit there and just look at charts, look at data, Flow Hub is integrated as much as possible as it can for that. Drew, I had an awesome time. Killer dispensary, I love it. I love the product, Thank I love you. the look. I, I mean, I think you guys are great. We're gonna hit the bricks. We're gonna go check out Mile High City. Thank right. you, it was thank a you. Pleasure yeah, the pleasure was all mine. Have a wonderful time, man. Cheers, thanks to you.
We just got done exploring this awesome city. Mile High City, big ups. Thanks to all our new friends, Can of Cribs, Deep Roots, episode one, we're out. You want to do it while this truck is going by? That'd be sweet. All right, cut, cut. We're about to enjoy some pancakes and eggs benedicts, which I'm very excited for. Uh, dude, if the ball's lost and we can't play anymore, are you sure? Yeah, so, sorry, Nick, it might be over.